everyone. Welcome back to Life in the Forest with me. I'm Catherine. I have on sunglasses and a hat because it's so nice and sunny and warm today. Um, and if you were here in the last two weeks of videos, you know that my name is Catherine. I'm an AmeriCorps service member. I serve with the Vermont Land Trust here in Newport, Vermont. And the uh, place that I get to serve at is called Bluffside Farm. It is also Newport, Vermont. We did parts of the forest the first week. The second week we did parts of a tree. Today we are going to explore the different types of trees and tree ID, tree identification. So I'm really excited about that. And um, if you wanna be able to identify some trees that are really common in Vermont, you can come with me. While you watch and listen, you can take notes, you can color, you can doodle. And remember that there are guided reflections that you can print out at the end of every episode. So as I walk to our first uh, place that we're gonna explore, I was gonna tell you about some reasons why identifying trees is important. So I used to not be really interested in identifying trees. I found it kind of challenging. It was hard for me. So I never really tried. And then when I had to learn about different tree identification, I realized that when you can identify trees in a place, it can help you learn more about that place and it can help you feel more connected to the places that you care about. So it can be challenging to identify trees. Sometimes it can be tricky and frustrating, but with these tips that I'll share today, we'll learn more and maybe you can see how learning to identify trees can help you to feel more connected to the place that you live or the places that you care about, and it can help you uh, feel empowered. It's really cool when you can know for sure what you're looking at. Okay, it is a gorgeous spring day. I think it's in the mid to high 50s. We're at the end of April here, and it feels really nice out today. And um, I wanted to say that sometimes identifying trees in the spring can be a little more challenging because um, there are no leaves yet on a lot of trees. There's just buds. Um, so in the springtime especially, what helps me when I'm starting out looking at the tree that I want to identify is kind of looking at it from far away. So can you see how on the right side of the picture, all these trees over here are green? Um, you can tell they're green from far away, but then when you look to the left side of the picture, we mostly just see kind of the gray-brown branches still on this side. Um, that is the first clue about what kind of tree you're looking at, is if it's really green and it's been green since winter, or are the branches pretty bare right now? So you've probably heard of the term evergreen. And as I'm showing you around the trees of this field, you'll see some trees that have been green all winter long. And they're still green even as spring is um, coming. Evergreen trees are called conifers or coniferous. And that means that they are green all year round. And they will have leaves that are more like needles and they have cones. Um, that's where the word conifer comes from is the cones. So now what about the trees that have not had leaves all winter and are now just starting to sprout their leaves and their buds like on this tree? These trees are called deciduous trees and deciduous trees will lose their leaves every year, usually in the fall. They'll go the whole winter without um, growing leaves and then in the springtime, like on this tree, the leaves will start to bud and then in the summer they'll be beautiful green again. 
And so the reason I'm explaining this at the very beginning of the video is because it is the first thing I look at when I am approaching a tree trying to identify it. Is it deciduous or is it a conifer? Is it coniferous? So now that we know the difference between deciduous trees and coniferous trees, we will look more closely at different trees of both types and we will look at the buds on these trees, the bark. If the tree has leaves right now, we'll look at those. And if they have needles and cones, we'll look at those. And we will try to determine what type of tree it is. Okay, so here we are in Conifer City. And the first tree I'll show you is called an Eastern White Pine. Since they have green needles year round, we'll look at these first to talk about some identifying features. So you'll notice um, if you are following along at home or just watching this video that an Eastern White Pine will have a bunch of clusters of pine needles on one twig or branch. And I'm looking right at the very specific cluster. So like this is one, this is another one, this is another one. They're all separate. And when you look from at one cluster, they will have one, two, three, four, five needles in one cluster. And that's easy to remember because the word white, as in white pine, has one, two, three, four, five letters in it for W-H-I-T-E. So, five needles in a cluster. And now we'll look at the bark. So this is a younger eastern white pine and the bark is kind of greenish gray. I don't know if you can tell. I'll show you another one. The bark is kind of greenish gray when it's young. This is the bark of an older eastern white pine um, and you can see that it's still gray but it's more gray brown um, and it's pretty thick looking and it looks pretty cracked and ridgy. I'll show you a way up close the bark of an eastern white pine. Here's uh, an eastern white pine cone that I found on the ground if you're out exploring pine cones and trees uh, out in the forest on your own, please don't pull them off the tree. But if you find some on the ground, they can be great tools for identifying your tree. So look how long this pine cone is. Pretty skinny and narrow. And that is very characteristic of an eastern white pine. Next on our list of conifers is the red pine. And the red pine can look really close to eastern white pine if you're just glancing at it but let's look closer. But I'll show you the main difference. So we'll look again at the clusters of the pine needles and if you find one cluster look up close there's only two needles. So the way I like to think of it is uh, white has five and red can't spell because if you were to try to spell out red with the red pine's pine needles and you tried to give a letter to each uh, needle, you would only have two letters. You wouldn't have enough for the full word. So that is kind of what the needles look like. There are just two in every cluster. Here's an up close of mature or adult uh, red pine bark. You can see that it keeps its kind of red brown color um, and it's still cracked but it's more flaky. And look, if I rub my hand on the bark pretty lightly, the bark will flake off pretty easily. We can also compare the pine cones to determine between the two different types of pine in this video. So 
this on the left is the pine cone from the eastern white pine. Remember, it's long. And but these are red pine pine cones because I found them underneath all these mature red pine trees. And they are much smaller, more oval shaped, and much um, shorter than the eastern white pine cone. Now we're going to move on to deciduous trees. And the first type of deciduous tree that we're going to talk about is that one, it's uh, pretty special to the state of Vermont. It, uh, a lot of people make that sweet syrupy stuff out of it. And it's pretty iconic. And that tree is, you guessed it, the sugar maple. The first thing that you can do to identify it if it doesn't have a sugaring tube going through it is to look at the buds. So I found some good buds to look at. Buds of a sugar maple are usually brown and sharp and pointed down away from the twig. They have lines that look like scales and they kind of look like the sugar cone that you might get with your ice cream. As you can see, the bark on this pretty young sugar maple is gray and smooth. And we can even see some of the leaves that were left over from uh, the fall. Before I got out here today, I printed off some examples of what a summertime maple leaf would look like, sugar maple. And then I found on the ground just now an example of one of the leftover, when, uh, like from fall, sugar maple leaves. So you can see that it has five lobes, and lobes are these pieces of the leaf that kind of go out a little bit. So one, two, three, four, five lobes. Oops. And there are some teeth, like those points that you see. One, two, three points there, four actually, points at the end of each lobe, so. The next type of deciduous tree I'm gonna show you is one that's pretty special here at Bluffside because um, it survives here so well thanks to its tolerance for kind of uh, drier conditions. And I'll tell you more about that and it is called the red oak. This is a young red oak here, and it has pretty smooth um, grayish bark. I don't know if you can tell. And you can see the buds on it. They're kind of greenish, red. And then as a red oak gets older, it will still be gray and it's pretty smooth compared to lots of other types of oak. So it still has kind of splits in the bark, but it is rather smooth. Here are examples of the red oak leaf. So you can see it has usually five to seven lobes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And um, on those lobes, there are kind of the pointy teeth like we saw in the maple leaf. Red oak will have the points on the end. And this here is a real red oak leaf that I found on the ground just now that is left over from fall. This is the printout, but it would be this green in the summer. Red oaks do so well, even in dry soil because they have this awesome thing down in their roots past where we can even see called a tap root and it reaches way, way down and um, helps the tree get water even if the soil is really dry. And um, right through these trees you can see like them for Magog, pretty cool. Okay, so for the fifth and final tree of today and the third deciduous tree that we're looking at, I am showing you my favorite type of tree. It is called a paper birch or a white birch. Those names mean the same type of tree. And can you tell why they call it that? Hmm, let's think. 
the bark of a paper birch has this beautiful bright white almost glow to it and paper birch has to do with that and the fact that the bark is pretty peely it peels off in layers naturally probably just from weather and wind and maybe animals um and oh gosh it's so beautiful and then i'll show you an older one over here have maybe more thick bark. They get darker. Down here we can see a lot of layers of peeling away. But they are just gorgeous trees. Cool fun fact about white birch is that Native Americans would use the bark to make canoes and that type of thing out of because the bark is pretty resistant to water and I just think it is beautiful. And here's examples of birch leaves. The green one that I printed out is what it will look like when they have sprouted for the spring and summer. And then this is one from fall. You can tell the point on the end has folded back, but you can see the little teeth on the sides and you can see that it's ovate or it has an oval shape. So that's it for the tree ID episode. I feel like I learned so much and was reminded of so many cool things about the trees here at Bluffside. I hope you learned a lot. Next week, the episode will be about tree adaptations. So we'll continue to explore Bluffside. And don't forget to check out the guided reflection at the end of this episode and fill it out if you want to. And uh, remember what you learned. So have a great day and we'll see you next week.